Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today we are going to talk a little bit about how to use masking fluid and paint a Christmas tree with lights. So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so today we are going to be painting a Christmas tree with some lights and we are also going to be talking about masking fluid. So I've gotten a lot of questions about masking fluid. How do you use it? What's the purpose of it? What brand do you recommend? And I'm going to cover that. So um, this is the brand I use, which is Windsor & Newton, and I haven't used many other ones. The only other one I used was a masking fluid pen, the blue one, I forget what it's called, years ago, and I wasn't too happy with it. I know others probably enjoy it. Wasn't right for me, but I have enjoyed this one and I haven't really tried many others. Okay, so what is the point of masking fluid? Basically, masking fluid preserves the white paper underneath your painting. So if you wanna leave spaces for highlights to remain white, but then paint the whole background a different color, this is great for that. It also makes it easier so you don't have to paint around those little details that you wanna keep white. So this one that I have comes in this liquid, and when you're using it, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're not using a brush that you love because it can ruin it. This is one of my masking fluid brushes. I have heard that if you dip it into dish soap beforehand and then you dip it into your masking fluid, it can protect your brush, but I just, I don't really care. <laughs> At this point, I have a, a couple brushes that I don't really mind getting ruined or just using them for my designated masking fluid brushes. And this is one of them. But today, instead of using the tip of the brush for this, we are going to be actually using the back. So I want to create some little white dots to remain highlights for the Christmas lights on the Christmas tree. So I'm actually gonna use the back of this to create those. And all I'm gonna do is just dip the back of my brush in there and I'm just going to do some little dots kind of going down in a, a triangle shape. I wanna try and keep them as round as I can. Staggering them. And if you have like a good brush with a good tip, you probably don't have to use the back, but obviously the tip of my <laughs> brush isn't the greatest, which is why I am using the back and it just creates a better circle in my mind. Okay, so I'm just gonna be creating these dots. And when you're using masking fluid, you don't wanna use a ton of it. So where it's so thick, where it's gonna take a long time to dry, but at the same time, you also don't wanna use it like too thin because then it could not cover as well as you'd like it to, in my experience. Um, another thing is before you paint on your paper or you put masking fluid on your paper, do a little tester spot to see if the masking fluid um, comes up properly on it. I have in the past had some... Um, papers that I've used with masking fluid where when I took it up, I removed the masking fluid, it ripped the paper. So just keep that in mind. You want to test right before you do it. Um, I haven't had that issue with my etcher sketchbook and I haven't had it with arches, which is what I'm painting on today. Um, but just definitely double check your paper before you do that, just so it doesn't rip your painting once you're done you're at the last step of just like taking it off because that that can be a, an issue or just really frustrating after you've done a, a full painting. So I'm just trying to space these out. I'm doing maybe some smaller ones. Okay, I think that's good. It's not in a direct triangle, but it's, it's good. I'm just going to wash off the back of my brush in a different jar. I'm going to go change my water. And then we are gonna leave this to completely dry. And you will know it's dry because at least with this one, um, the masking fluid turns a little bit darker of a yellow and it feels kind of rubbery to the touch. So wait for that to happen and then we can continue our painting. Okay, so now that our masking fluid is dry, we are gonna start painting. So I am thinking I wanna do like a Payne's Gray background and then the tree can be sitting on some snow. Um, and yeah, so instead of painting the outline of the tree, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint the whole thing Payne's Gray because if I do a background of Payne's Gray um, and I like slightly lift up some of the color with my paper towel, 
if I paint green over top of the paint's gray, it won't um, affect the integrity of the green color that I'm using. If I were to do like a red background, I would not be painting green over top because that would create brown. But because blue and green and blue is like comes from paint's gray or paint's gray has a bit of blue in it because they sit together on the color wheel it won't make too much of a difference if I layer a green on top of a blue hope that makes sense okay so the thing I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take some paint's gray and I'm gonna start by doing a wash over the whole thing except the bottom where I'm gonna have some snow now be careful when you're painting over top of the masking fluid because we don't want to lift the masking fluid okay and if you're too rough with your brush it may lift off and you don't want that just yet we're going to lift it off later and I could tell that it was dry because I could feel that kind of little rubbery feel to them and they also were a darker yellow it doesn't take too long for them to dry just gonna try to create an even background here um it depends on your climate in your office or wherever you're working uh but it doesn't take a long time to dry so i'm just gonna continue this paint's gray and i'm just gonna do like a little bit of a snowbank here just leaving that white actually i might do like a really light blue in a minute just trying to get this evenness okay do a little bit darker at the top here just bringing it down okay and then I'm going to do really light wash of I think just a littlest bit of blue in the snow just a little bit so I don't want it too white necessarily. I'm just gonna blend it down. Okay, like so. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take my size six brush and I'm just gonna take some clean water on my size six brush and I'm just going to gently tap some clean water, a little bit of dots. To get this kind of effect like it's like snow or lights because that clean water repels the background the pigment like that then I am going to take a tissue or your paper towel I'm just gonna roll it up into a ball and I'm just gonna start lifting where that tree is gonna be just so you do see the green a bit more it's okay if there's still a little bit of Payne's gray underneath that's not a big deal but I do want to lift the color just a bit. And again, being very gentle not to lift the, you know, <laughs> the masking fluid. Oh my gosh, words. I would love to have words in my brain sometime. That would be nice. I'm also, I feel a cold coming on again. So I'm just a little out of it. <laughs> If you can't tell okay so I'm just lifting the color here Payne's gray is actually fairly easy to lift off okay and then we're gonna let this dry and we will come right back okay so I'm just gonna mix some sap green here and a little bit of my perlene green just to get like a medium dark kind of green and then I'm gonna go back in with some darker color after but I'm gonna start at the top here the little branch kind of going upwards and then I'm just going to start to flick some branches a little bit darker coming out to the side and down I want to try and make this even thinner at the top here Now 
and I'm just using my size 12. I might switch to my size 6, though, I think, just to get a bit of a sharper little branches here. I'm just going to use this mostly for the center just to get all that coverage. I'm just flicking. And I want, I'm going to lay down the color first and then I'm going to go back over it just to make sure it's still wet. Because the next part we're going to do kind of like a cool light effect. And it needs to be a little bit wet for it to work. Actually, I don't think I'm going to do my size 6 brush. I'm just going to continue with this. It's working pretty well. Just flicking it out to the side. Okay. And you can make it a little bit more uneven too. This is kind of like a perfect tree look, which I usually don't go for, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take my size six brush. Once I'm done, just kind of evenly <laughs> making it sure it's all evenly wet. Now I'm going to take my size six brush and I am going to take a little bit of water, not a lot. I don't want it dripping wet. I'm going to touch the top of the masking fluid and it's going to push, the water is going to drip down and kind of push the um, pigment surrounding it away. So it's going to look like it's kind of like a light shining. Or you can just kind of, I might not even drop it, I might just use some water on my brush and just kind of go around it to lift slightly some of that color. Hold on. This is the tricky part. I'm going to be honest, I've done this a couple times now and it just hasn't worked out, but we're making it work today. <laughs> okay, so I'm just taking a bit of clean water and I'm just kind of going around that masking fluid to hopefully lift some of the color. Like there's a glow coming from where that masking fluid is. Okay, you can even like go around it and just kind of lift it a bit. And my son's crying downstairs. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't nap, kid. Didn't have a second nap. That was very short, so he's cranky. Okay, so I'm just using some clean water. We're going around, maybe lifting it a little bit to act like they are shining. And if you're getting some of that paper towel marks when you're lifting, you can just kind of go back and just smooth it out a bit if you need to. Oops. And we are also going to do some darker branches as well so you can cover it up. like so. Okay. And then I'm just going to take some darker green again. And I'm just going to do some 
little um, darker branches in between those lights. Just to give it a bit more of a shadow in between. And you can even just kind of break up the bristles in your brush to get more of a, what's it called, look. <laughs> words, words, Emma. You know, broken up, kind of, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. You guys know what I mean. I hope. Now, when we lift up the masking fluid, um, it's gonna reveal the white dots underneath. So it's up to you then if you want to, um, you know, put some color in the lights. I think I might just leave mine white just cause I think it will look really nice and just simple. I'm also afraid to ruin it. <laughs> um, but whatever, if you wanna like make them different colors, you can do that, whatever works for you whatever your preference is okay almost done and then I'm just gonna take my brush wash it off just kind of slightly touch the bottom of this tree to get a little bit of a, a shadow might even add a little bit of Payne's Gray. And then blend it out. Let's get my bigger brush for this. Like that. Like so. And then we're gonna let this dry and we will take up the masking fluid. Okay, now that it's dry, we can take up the masking fluid and all you have to do to do that is gently use your finger and rub it and it comes right up. and reveals those bright white circles underneath. Just make sure that your watercolor is dry because if it is wet, you might rub some white or wet watercolor onto your tree and then it would ruin the white underneath. But it's fairly easy to take up. You could always use like a little eraser if that's easier. Like so, okay. So like I said, if you would like to add some color to your lights, you definitely can. I don't think I'm gonna do that, but I think what I am gonna do is add some snowfall and maybe some snow to the top of the trees. So I'm just gonna wet up my brush, my size six, using my Dr. Peach Martin's Bleed Proof White. And I'm just gonna have some snowflakes coming down like so. And then I'm just gonna add some, actually I'm gonna make it light blue. I'm just gonna mix it with my Payne's Gray because it's nighttime. So it wouldn't be too, too white. There would be a bit of a bluish tint to it. Okay. Be a bit of a shadow and then those um, lights will pop out a bit more. Put it right here. Just going around those lights.
like so. I might even take a little bit of the darker blue and just kind of add it in there too for a bit more shadow. Let's make it a little bit darker. Just adding it underneath. A little bit more white to some of the top parts. And then even down below here. like that. There we go. And then for the tiniest, tiniest little detail at the top of this tree here, I just want to do a couple little tiny um, branches, even some popping out on the bottoms, just for a little bit of detail. You can make it as detailed or as not detailed. <laughs> Loose is the word I think we're looking for there. <laughs> as you'd like. Just adding a little bit of darkness underneath some of those um, snow, snow bits. Man, I think this is the most I've never made since. The least I've made sense. There we go. Ever. I don't know what's going on today. This cold, I can tell it's coming on and I'm just like, blah. You know? <laughs> like that. Have a little bit poking out. There you go. And then you could always, you know, write something at the bottom like, Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, anything. And now let's take off the tape. I feel like I definitely could have centered it better, but this way we can write a message at the bottom. You can turn it into a nice card, whatever you like. And there we go. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all of my other platforms for tons more content. See you in the next video. Bye.